In this video, we're going to look at Hess's Law, which is another way that we can calculate the delta H for a reaction, or the enthalpy of a reaction, or heat of a reaction. So delta H um, is known for a lot of different reactions. You can actually look up the delta H values for a lot of different reactions that occur. Um, though it's not listed for every single reaction. So you can, however, estimate the delta H for a reaction you don't know if you can manipulate reactions that you do know to add up to the overall that you want. So that sounds complicated, but it's really not that complicated. Um, actually, delta H is something called a state function. So it only depends on where you start and where you end, the final and the initial. Um, so it doesn't matter if you carry out a reaction in steps um, or if you, in like multiple steps, or if you carry out a reaction in just one step, um, the delta H should be the same for the overall reaction. So Hess's law states that if a reaction is carried out in a series of steps, the delta H for the overall reaction will be equal to the sum of the delta H's for the individual steps. So if you have delta H values for the steps, you can add them up and get the overall delta H for a reaction that you don't know. Um, so just kind of visualizing this, here's the enthalpies. Okay, um, this is looking at a combustion reaction. Here um, are my reactants, the hydrocarbon and oxygen, and here are my products, CO2 and H2O. If this was carried out in one step, the delta H of the overall reaction is negative 890 kilojoules. Negative meaning it's exothermic, so 890 kilojoules are released. Um, and if I were to carry this out in two steps, Okay, notice that the sum of the two steps still adds up to negative 890. It doesn't matter if I do this in one step or two or even more. The delta H really only depends on the initial and the final. That's why they call it a state function. Um, so just kind of showing that with reactions, if I have the steps and I have the delta H's of the, of the known steps, I can add them up to get the delta H of the overall. So what does this mean for problems? A lot of problems you'll see like this example here, where here's a reaction, and I don't know the delta H of it, but I do give you the delta H's, the enthalpy, the heats of reaction, or enthalpies of reaction, for these particular steps, for these known reactions. So my goal is to figure out how can I manipulate these steps so that when I add them together, I get the overall reaction because if they can add up to the overall reaction, I can just add the delta H's of the steps. So to really figure that out, I go to my target equation, so this is the one I want, and I'm gonna consider each um, substance and find it in the step. So here I see 2S solid. Okay, do I have any steps that have S solid? Yes, this first one has S solid, and then I ask myself, okay, is it on the correct side. Okay, so is it on the left side? Is it a reactant? Yes. Okay, if it was on the incorrect side, so let's say S solid was on the right hand side, then I would want to flip this reaction. And if I flip a reaction, remember what I have to do to delta H. I would flip the sign. Okay, so it's on the correct side. And then I ask myself, does it have the correct coefficient? Um, no, it doesn't. I want 2S, but this step has just so when I add them together, I need to end up having 2s. So if I need to multiply by a certain um, factor, what you just have to remember is you have to multiply the entire step by that factor, including delta h. So if I were to multiply this step by 2, my delta h would also be doubled. If I were to multiply it by 3, my delta h would be tripled. If I were to divide it by 2, my delta h would be divided by 2. So whatever um, change that you're making to the coefficients has to be carried through the entire reaction and the delta h. And you're just really doing that each step, so basically for each um, substance here. Okay, so you find the substance in your step and you ask yourself, is it on the correct side? If not, I have to flip the reaction and change the sign of delta h to that step. Does it have the correct coefficient? If not, I'm going to have to multiply by a factor and do the same thing for the whole reaction and delta H. Um, so I could see right away this first step I want to flip. Uh, I mean, I don't want to flip, excuse me, this first step. I just want to multiply by 2. Okay, then I see there's 3O2. I see O2 in more than one step. So whenever I see something that's in more than one step, 
I'm going to hope that that resolves itself once I make the other changes. So anything that I see in more than one step, for me personally, I leave alone and hope it works out. Um, and then I see 2SO3. Where do I see SO3? Okay, it's in the second reaction. Is it on the correct side? Yep, it's a product, so I don't want to flip anything. Does it have the correct coefficient? Yes, it does. Um, so I don't want to do anything, make no changes to my second reaction. Okay, um, so again, all I'm doing is I'm manipulating my steps so that when these two are added, I can get the target equation. So let's make those changes. Okay, so this first one we said we want to multiply by two. Okay, I just want to show you right now as they are without multiplying that first one by two, they do not add up to this overall reaction. Okay, I would get two S's, S solids, I'd get two SO2, uh, I'd get one SO2 because one of them would cancel here. Um, I get two O2's and a two SO3. It does not add up to my target. But if I take that first reaction, multiply, notice I'm multiplying the entire thing by two, including the delta H. Okay, that changes all my coefficients to be 2, 2, 2, and now my delta H is doubled. Okay, let's try adding the reactions now. So does anything cancel out? Yes, 2SO2 and 2SO2 cancel out completely. Okay, does anything add up? 2O2 and O2 are on the same side, so they're going to add up. So notice anything on the same side adds together. Anything on opposite sides, some of them might cancel. Okay, and I do get now my target equation. So now I can add up the delta H's, make sure you've manipulated them already, however you manipulated the step. And I get that my delta H for the overall is negative, nine, uh, negative 792. Okay, so always double check that once you've manipulated your steps, they do add up. Notice that the O2's do work out the way that I had hoped they would. Um, if they didn't, I could always go back to the drawing board. And I have my delta H. So this is just one other way to calculate delta H. We said if you have a calorimetry experiment, you can get delta H with it by making, making sure you record the change in temperature and QMC delta T through an experiment. But this is another way to get delta H from just tabulated values that are already known for different reactions. So problem solving strategy, work backward from the required reaction, go through each reactant and product, Find it in the step and ask yourself, is it on the correct side? Is the coefficient correct? And make sure if you reverse any reactions, okay, you're flipping the sign at delta H. If you're multiplying by anything, you're multiplying the whole reaction and the delta H by that same factor. Okay, take a moment, try this example, pause your video, and then check your work. So in this one... Okay, here's my steps, here's my overall, and sometimes you might have two or three or four steps. Don't get intimidated, it's the same process. So here's H2O as one of my reactants. Let's find it in my steps. It's only in the first step. Is it on the correct side? No, it's not. So I'm going to have to flip this first reaction, and that's going to flip the sign of delta H. Okay, does it have the correct coefficient? Yes, so I'm not going to multiply it by any factor. My next thing is C, solid. Okay, let's find that. C solid, C solid. Oh, okay, there it is. Only in my second step. Is it on the correct side? No, it's a product here. I want it as a reactant. So I'm going to flip this reaction and flip the sign of delta H. And it also doesn't have the correct coefficient. I want it to have a coefficient of 1, but here it has a coefficient of 2. So I am going to, you can think of it either as divide this entire thing by 2, or you can think of it as multiplying by a half. No matter what, I have to carry that change through every coefficient and the delta H. Okay, And then once I do that, that should also work out my CO. Notice it's on the wrong side also and also has a 2, so that, that kind of justifies flipping this reaction and multiplying by a half. Um, and the H2 is on the wrong side, that also justifies flipping this first reaction. Okay, So we have to flip both reactions. Okay. And again, when I do that, it flips the sign. So I'm going to flip both of these. This was negative. This is positive. Now I flipped them, and they flipped signs. And I'm also going to notice that they still don't add up. Okay, If I just do that, I have to multiply this entire second reaction by a half. Okay, So that gets rid of this one. That makes this a half. No problem. It's OK. Hopefully it'll work out. And make this a 1. And then this reduces by a half as well. 
Now when I add it together, I'll notice I have a half O2 on the left, a half O2 on the right. Those cancel, okay? And I do get my overall target equation. So now I can add the delta H's of the steps and I get the overall delta H. I now have my thermochemical equation for the equation that I want. Okay, you, once you find delta H, this lends itself well to other free response question parts. So maybe now they ask, what's the heat required for 10 grams of carbon monoxide to be produced? Take a moment, give it a shot, pause your video, and then check your work. So now that I have delta H in my thermochemical equation, we call this, we can use that delta H as a conversion factor between heat, kilojoules, and moles of any of these reactants or products. Um, just remember that this is a stoichiometric quantity, so this is the amount of heat released for every 1H2O or 1C or 1CO or 1H2 because those are the coefficients. You have to consider the coefficients. So just like any dimensional analysis problem, I'm going to start with 10 grams of what I start with, CO, be specific. I can't use delta H to relate to grams, but I can use it to relate to moles, so I can mole that out with the molar mass, 28 grams in one mole. And then I can say that this is the heat, the kilojoules absorbed for every one mole of CO produced. And now I can successfully change grams into kilojoules using my delta H as a conversion factor between heat and moles of each of these products or reactants. Take a moment, try this add-on to the same example. Okay, so here's my delta H again. This is kilojoules, and notice that it's per every one mole of CO. Okay, that's what this is really telling me here. If there is a coefficient of two, it would be for two moles, uh, excuse me, for one mole of C. If there was a coefficient of two in front, there would be for a two on the bottom. If there's a three in front, a three on the bottom. So I'm looking at the coefficient to see per how many moles. But I want the heat required per gram, so I can just change moles into grams, okay? And now I have, notice my units, kilojoules per gram of carbon. Still positive because delta H here is endothermic.